is it better being fast or is it better being stealthy? Or is it important to be both? Or maybe this is not a relevant discussion. Well, I believe it is relevant, otherwise I would not be here discussing it. The problem here is how to go through a network composed of ground-based air defenses and aircraft all integrated. And it seems for now that there are two large families of solutions, either being stealthy or being very fast. The Statna School of Thought has generated not only low observable aircraft, but also a generation of weapons that rely on low observability to penetrate a network of defenses. The high-speed approach has given birth to various families of hypersonic weapons that are posing new challenges to the conventional air defenses. So, what's happening here? Well, buckle up, because this is quite a ride, and as usual, I think you won't find this anywhere else on YouTube. So, welcome, I am Gas, and this is Millennium 7. Sometimes I find myself watching videos whose content should be part of my research. However, taking notes is quite unpractical, so I needed some help, and the sponsor of this video got me covered. Note is the world's number one note-taking device, EA-enabled and supported by GPT-5.0. Note captures very high-quality audio of uh, meetings, calls, lectures, notes, anything containing spoken words. With the support of the app, it can turn it into structured information by producing summaries, to-do lists, mind maps, and so on. You may ask, Gas, what are you talking about? You can do all of that with your phone. Why do you need a device? Note can record both ambient conversations and the phone calls. You just need to toggle a physical switch. It is a one-touch device. You start recording just by pressing a button. That's it. Furthermore, notifications or calls won't interrupt the recording. The transcription is very accurate. In a meeting, it identifies each speaker and labels each piece of conversation. It supports 112 languages, which is way more than any equivalent for now. When everything has been captured, you can get neat summaries that extract key takeaways decisions or action items using over 7,000 templates that you can export and share with other applications. And you can ask the AI to quickly retrieve the information you need immediately. The device itself is as unintrusive as it could be. It is less than 3 mm thick and the size of a credit card. It comes with a MagSafe compatible leather case if you want to keep it attached to your phone. The battery lasts for 30 hours of continuous recording and months in standby. And the device can store up to 480 hours of audio. Anyone who needs to extract structured info from the spoken word will find the plot note a lifesaver. So this is the right time to get yourself a plot note because there is an exclusive Discount. But be quick because it's just for a limited time. All the links are in the description. Low observability as a concept is making, well, anything difficult to be observed. For an aircraft or a flying weapon like a missile, it means reducing the radar signature and the infrared signature. In Theory, it should involve all the signatures, visual, acoustic, chemical, but these two are the important ones. This can be obtained by tactics, which means flying low using the earth curvature, hydrometeors, or the ground irregularities as a concealment. Or, as more usually intended, it can be obtained by designing and building the aircraft according to stealth principles. We will soon have a detailed discussion about how stealth shapes are like they are in a future video, so stay tuned. This principle can be summed up in few points. Redirect the radar reflections and re-emissions away from the radar receiver, absorb part of the radiation, cool the hot surfaces and the exhaust plume. The same principles apply to weapons. A modern missile characterized by high accuracy and lethality is expensive and resource intensive, therefore they are not being built in large numbers. This makes them high pain targets that are worth of a pretty sophisticated interceptor. The other side of the equation is using a large number of low-end cruise missiles, but this is not the discussion we are having today. 
like any other flying object, even a missile should be built with stealth in mind. For example, consider the AGM-158 JASM, which is probably at the top of the US food chain of long-range air-to-ground weapons. The missile's outer shape is the first layer of its stealth design uh, because it uses faceted surfaces with a classic stealth chine, and then it features a trapezoidal cross-section and also edge alignment and smooth transitions. These features scatter radar energy away from the emitter instead of reflecting it back. The result is a radar cross-section far smaller than conventional cruise missiles like the Tomahawk. Furthermore, the engine intake is buried inside the fuselage and the compressor face, normally a major radar hotspot, is completely hidden from direct line of sight. While the specific materials are obviously classified, the missile uses composite structures and radar absorbent coatings consistent with other lobe servable systems. On the infrared side, the exhaust is partially shielded and mixed with ambient air, reducing the plume temperature. This makes infrared detection significantly harder. The JASM can fly extremely low, often just 10 or 20 meters above the terrain, following a programmed path. At that altitude, radar horizon limits become a major advantage. A ground-based radar simply cannot see the missile until it's already close. Guidance is handled by GPS and by an inertial navigation system with an imaging infrared seeker for the terminal phase. That seeker allows the missile to remain completely passive, no emissions, no warning. Furthermore, it is not officially known, but it seems that the missile features an electronic warfare suite for self-defense, which is activated automatically when potentially dangerous emissions are detected. As you can see, it is a complex and advanced weapon that requires an entire supporting ecosystem. For example, there must be a way of providing updated libraries to the electronic warfare suite or maps to the navigation system and target pictures for the terminal infrared guidance. This implies an entire intelligence ecosystem behind the missile operations. Even more relevant though is the way the weapon is supposed to penetrate area denial defenses. The main missile defense is the ability of remaining undetected, sneaking through gaps and defiles. Should it be identified, the missile is basically defenseless, or better, it still has the electronic warfare system, but well, they may not be 100% effective, and in principle, even a simple anti-aircraft gun can shoot it down. The F-117 shot down in Serbia and the RQ-170 in Iran are examples of what may happen when stealth goes wrong. The system remains vulnerable. It didn't happen often so far, but when it happens, it is a deal breaker. The hypersonic flight regime is characterized by a speed above Mach 5. Mach 5 is a conventional limit, but above that speed, flight conditions progressively change. The most interesting change, at least for me, is that the fluid behaves more and more according to the Newtonian hypothesis rather than the classic Navier-Stokes equations. If you are confused, you have all the right to be. The Navier-Stokes equation govern the motion of fluid around the body. Computational flight dynamics resolves them through numeric means to calculate the aircraft performance. The Newtonian hypothesis, on the other hand, models the fluid as small particles that impact the aircraft and exchange momentum with it, depending on the geometry of the impact. Newton was wrong at low speed, but at very high supersonic speed and hypersonic speed, this model becomes more and more accurate as the speed increases. What is the consequence? Well, hypersonic weapons tend to be very elongated with a reduced frontal section, but other missiles are like this too. It is more a design methodology consideration. It is just a thing to say if you want to impress the girls at the party. You don't go to human parties very often, do you, sir? Uh, it has been a very, very long time, Otis. Anyway, the other and more consequential change is that a plasma sheet starts enveloping the aircraft and the temperature rises to hundreds or thousands of degrees. This means that the aircraft must withstand these temperatures and keep working. 
You may understand that in this respect, it is easier for a missile to be hypersonic than for an aircraft. And in fact, the core issue in developing hypersonic vehicles is developing materials that could manage these temperatures for the time necessary to accomplish the mission without compromising the vehicle or the flight itself. One typical problem is that small control surfaces are just burned away, they just melt away if they're not adequately designed. Another consequence is that plasma has a very complicated interaction with electromagnetic radiation because it absorbs, scatter and reflects the radiation all at the same time. Finally, this hot plasma sheath makes a hypersonic vehicle very visible in the infrared, which is a perfect way of detecting it. So, for example, consider the 3M22 Zircon missile, the famous Russian hypersonic missile that has been used in Ukraine. Unlike low observable cruise missiles, its survivability is built on speed, altitude, maneuverability and reduced radar signature due to the plasma effects. Public available imagery suggests a relatively conventional cylindrical missile optimized for a high altitude flight up to 28 km if we trust some sources, a speed up to Mach 8 or 9 and a range up to 1000 km. There is no evidence of faceted surfaces or any radar scattering geometry comparable to low observable missiles. However, the missile's plasma sheet formed during hypersonic flight will attenuate up to a certain measure the radar returns, reducing the detection range. The missile guidance is based on GPS inertial systems with a terminal radar guidance. More importantly, the Zircon does not need to remain passive like a low observable cruise missile. It is already pretty easy to detect. Its survivability is based on kinematics, not emission control. This missile is not only incredibly fast, it is also maneuverable. At that speed, all it does is small direction adjustments, but even those are sufficient to throw off the interceptor's calculations. Hypersonic weapons can be intercepted by the most capable air defenses, but basically only when the weapon is directed against the air defense head-on. Air defense is basically impossible against hypersonic weapons. Furthermore, the logistic chain required to feed the weapon with target data has a smaller footprint. It requires little more than the target coordinates and a satellite radar picture of the area. And here we have the difference. Aircraft or weapons that use stealth as the main characteristic to defeat the air defenses, when they are detected, become vulnerable. Hypersonic weapons, whose main survivability feature is speed, well, they never slow down. They may miss the target, but they remain extremely difficult to intercept. So, which one is better? Well, none of them is. They are just different types of threats that make the job of their defenses difficult. As such, they both have a place in the lineup and they both represent a threat that the defender needs to confront with. And basically this is it. I know it's a bit underwhelming, but this is how generally these things end. And I don't like hyping things for nothing. So thank you very much for watching this short video. It has been a real pleasure having your attention. If you like what you saw, please support the channel on Patreon or by being a member or by buying some merchandise or by any of the other means available. All the links are in the description. To all those who have already helped, I will never thank you enough. If you can support the channel financially and there's no problem, do it only if you can, then please subscribe if you haven't, about half of you haven't subscribed and I don't know why really, uh, but also interact with the video, so leave a comment and hit like, because with the current algorithm this is the best way to be notified when a new video drops. So this is it for today, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.